Hello, Brick Lane. I'm Andrew Hegeman, and this is my wife, Sarah. As some of you might know, we were recently married on April 25th in the middle of the stay-at-home order. As I'm sure you can imagine, the wedding that we had was not the wedding that we expected to have. We wanted to share a little bit about what the wedding itself was like, how we worked through the changes that we had to make, and ultimately how the Lord provided for us. When we originally planned for our wedding, we had a pretty standard experience that most couples do. Some details required a lot of work and time and thought, and others just came very easily. We knew that we wanted to have a service that involved our friends and family, um, that had a time of worship, and really that it was going to be a service focused on the gospel of Christ. We had a plan in place so that we could make sure that everything was ready and taken care of by our wedding date, which was April 25th, uh, and we were locked in to have the wedding and the reception at Brick Lane. So just as we started to plan our seating arrangements, the coronavirus started to dominate the news cycle. And as both of our jobs became consumed with virus planning meetings, we quickly realized that we were going to have to make our own wedding decisions quickly. And this is where we realized the Lord would take care of us no matter what, because he provided us with unity and peace in our biggest decision, which was that no matter what, we were still going to be married on April 25th, and we would try to have a wedding celebration with our guests later. We obviously, we didn't want to wait uh, on another three months or so to, to get married, especially because we'd already signed a lease and put down a deposit on this apartment. Uh, we decided that we still wanted to have some sort of ceremony on April 25th, but first we needed a marriage license. We knew that the township buildings were pretty much closed, but we thought surely that there's going to be some way that we can get a marriage license online. But we looked and we couldn't find anything. Eventually, York County uh, announced that they were going to start giving out licenses over Zoom, but they were prioritizing their own residents before residents from other counties. So we thought, great, now we can't even get married because no one is going to give us a marriage license. At this point, we felt pretty defeated. We had already come to terms with the fact that we couldn't have the big day that we envisioned, but now it looked like we couldn't even get married at all. But miraculously, a few days later, we learned that Lackawanna County, which is about two hours away, was still giving out licenses. So Andrew and I took a day off and headed up to Lackawanna where we managed to secure our marriage license. And now that we could legally be married, we started making plans for our wedding on April 25th. The pastor marrying us was Jack Kranz, who owns and operates the camp at the Old Mill, which some of you may be familiar with. And he's a close friend of my family and officiated my parents' wedding as well. And my older sister and I grew up serving at the camp each summer, so it was a very special place to me. And before ever meeting Andrew, I could picture myself getting married in the chapel at camp. And with the coronavirus shutting down pretty much every other option, we decided to have the ceremony there. So after some careful planning with Pastor Jack, we determined that we could have a ceremony with our parents, my siblings and grandparents, and my best man and Sarah's maid of honor. Fifteen people total. Sarah's grandmother was on lockdown at Tel High, so she couldn't make it. Her older sister uh, lives in New Mexico, so she couldn't come. And Sarah's younger sister is immunocompromised, so she couldn't be present either. So although the crowd was small, uh, and some of the most important people in our lives couldn't be present, it turned out that we still had a very beautiful and very special time. So even though it seemed like everything was going wrong from the start, we were able to worship together, recite the traditional wedding vows, and take communion with our family and friends who were present as our first act as a married couple. We were still able to be married in the midst of a stay-at-home order due to the pandemic, 
and we were still able to go back to our new apartment together and enjoy a few days off from our busy jobs. Through it all, the Lord constantly reminded us that it wasn't about the big day, but rather it was about joining together as one before him. Sarah and I are so thankful for the wedding that the Lord has blessed us with and for all of you for praying for us. The ceremony was so very special and it was filled with joy. And now with working at home, we've been blessed to be able to work at our jobs sitting just 10 feet apart from one another, which has been wonderful. Ultimately, Sarah and I wanted to share this story with you, our church family, to give praise and glory to God. This whole situation could maybe be written up as a story of romantic love, uh, persevering and conquering challenges, uh, and of uh, pulling two people uh, together and making them stronger. But, but really, it's not that at all. Really, this is a story about how God took great care to love and provide for us in the midst of our own spiritual weaknesses. Because both Sarah and I faced a lot of disappointment and frustration and even hopelessness in our planning. And we failed often to trust God. But God took care of us anyway, in spite of our weaknesses. So let me share with you the command of Moses to the people of Israel, which certainly applied to our wedding ceremony and also to the very chaotic world that we're living in right now. From Deuteronomy 31. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. May the Lord who goes before you bless you. Reclaim.